Got all quiet all of a sudden. I know. Lower, Go live and everybody's live. And everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Staring at the empty void of the internet. Hey, what do you say we play some D and D, guys? I'm ready. Bad idea. Oh, bad yeah. idea. All right. Well, so welcome everybody uh, to a special Wednesday night community players dad bod D and D one shot. Uh, I am your host tonight, Devin. Uh, you can also refer to me as DM or GM or that guy. So uh, let's get our plugs out of the way first. Um, you can subscribe to us here on Twitch. You can check us out over on YouTube. You can follow us on Twitter. You can join our Discord. You can download our podcasts. And you can come play games with us. So if you join our Discord and you type in the command in any of the channels, exclamation point I want in, you'll be taken to a super secret chat uh, where we are setting up community one shots uh, just to try and promote uh, play amongst uh, people who haven't known each other before and first time players and just give you a chance to hang out with everybody. So if that sounds fun, you should check that out. Uh, we will be live tomorrow night, yes, for the podcast. That's at 9.30 uh, Eastern Time. Friday, we've got Waterdeep going on. That's also at 9.30 Eastern Time. Uh, our next one shot is July 31st. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Okay. All uh, right. I was only halfway listening. Uh, and uh, our good friend uh, Cyanite is going to be running a game that he wrote himself. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun. Everybody There's tune in for that. One spot left to get in that game if you want in. Yeah, go grab that spot. It's yours. All right. Uh, anything else? Anybody else got any? Yeah, we got a anything? giveaway. That's right, the <gasps> giveaway. Why don't you tell us about the giveaway, Bob? Yeah, so for hitting 1,000 followers on Twitter... We had our very special friends over at Skull Splitter Dice promote a giveaway. So they are giving away their new dice set called Hope's Glimmer. Um, it is unbelievably amazing looking, and it's black and like a tint of yellow. Um, but it's going to be running for two weeks. So tell your friends, maybe somebody who doesn't you know, own some dice, get some. But it is a metal set of dice that is amazing. So if you're in Twitch right now, use the command exclamation point giveaway, and it will give you a link to the gleam.io, and you'll be all set. Thanks, Bob. All right, so before we begin, let's, uh, let's have our guests introduce themselves and drop a little pluggy-poo. Tell us who you are, what you're doing here, where we can find you when you're not here. Uh, Steven, you want to start? Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, hi, my name is Steven the Demon. Uh, you might recognize me from the Oddball Show, and if you don't, that's fine. No one watches. Um, so, uh, I'm going to be playing, uh, Lintflock Gross... Grass? Gross. Lintflock Gross today. Uh, I'm a giant ranger, and I roam the mountainside, uh, 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 doing stuff. Did you need right. more information? I can come up with some fake stuff. No, that's per that's that's perfect. Uh, perfect. Do, you, do, you, do you have a, a Twitter handle or a Twitch or anything? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we're 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 on Twitch at the Oddball Show. You can find us on uh, on Twitter at uh, at the Oddball Stream. Uh, I'm sure we're on YouTube. Probably statistically, I'd have to guess we are. <laughs> I don't know. Just just you know, eh, if you search around, you'll find something. <laughs> All right, and Anders. Uh, hi, I'm Anders. You can find me on the internets at Anders underscore D underscore K um, on the Twitters. Um, I have a little thing that says where you can find me because I just kind of hop around on everybody's channels and play in as much as I can because I'm addicted to playing. Um, you can find me next time you can find me is on Saturday on a channel called Variant Rolls, and I'm going to be... Dungeon Mastering Assault Marsh campaign. And Ooh. I'm not ready for it. But that's <laughs> fine. That's how it always is. Um, tonight I will be playing 
a little gnome named Thatchery Jax, who is a knowledge cleric and who speaks nine languages. Doesn't know how to actually talk to people, though. Doesn't have any <laughs> social skills. All right, that sounds awesome. Uh, so we'll just go around and have Chris and Bob introduce your characters as well. Uh, yeah, so I'm Chris. You can find me at with Dad Bob D and D, uh, all that good stuff that Devin talked about earlier. Uh, tonight I am playing Gank. He is a bugbear, an older bugbear. He is one with the mountains. He kind of he's a monk. He just kind of chills in the mountains. Uh, so he's kind of going back to his place of comfort, and he's with this crew uh, to try to find a job to finish this job and get a little bit of cash so that he can spend more time in the mountains not talking to people so same with uh thatchery just kind of kind of smart but doesn't like people yeah so i'm bob i'm the dm of our water deep campaign that's friday nights at 8 30 p.m central time if you want to check us out um but yeah so you can find me i, I usually run the dad bob twitter i do have my own twitter but i don't use it so i don't advertise it um, I'm playing Block. Block is an uh, Earth Genasi that um, has just been kind of wandering as a lost soul and uh, stumbled upon the party here. And we'll get into some fun times. Nice. All right. Uh, so I will tell everyone what we're running tonight is the Lost Library of Quailish. This was a uh, mini module put out by Wizards of the Coast uh, as part of their uh, uh, charity for Extra Life. So all proceeds from the purchase of the Lost Library Quailish go towards uh, Extra Life, uh, help some kids and uh, extended stays in hospitals, have some games to play. Um, and I'll tell you another thing. It's not just a one shot. This this is a mini campaign that can be dropped in alongside of either Tomb of Annihilation or Waterdeep Dragon Heist uh, with just a little bit of scrubbing. Uh, and it, they give you rules for running it through, I believe, six weeks. So if you want to stretch out your existing game, it's a nice little module to kind of throw in the middle, a little, little side quest, so to speak. Uh, our version is going to be very remixed. Um, I do not think anybody wants to play a six-hour one-shot. So uh, we we have uh, we have cut it and chopped it and reproduced it, and now we're going to play Lost Library Quailish, the remix. <laughs> sorry, I had to do it once. It's all right. Get get out of your system. <laughs> one other one. No. Okay. That's it. Long ago, there was an inventor and adventurer named Quailish. Not many know of his deeds save for one weird invention known as the Quailish Apparatus, a submersible machine. The device was a monetary success with every port city from Waterdeep to Nyanzaru buying many of the machines for dredging the harbors and clearing sewer blockages. Many awaited his next invention, and some scholars even thought that Feyrun was set for an age of advancement, the age of machines, if you will. But alas, the time never came. Quailish used his newfound wealth to establish a library slash laboratory deep in the Great Peak Mountains, free from spying eyes. There, they say he slowly lost his mind as he tinkered and experimented hundreds of years ago. You, a party of brave and bold adventurers, have been tasked by the Lords of Waterdeep with finding the lost library of Quailish and unlocking the secrets he worked so hard to hoard for himself all those years ago. So we're gonna kind of fat. We're not gonna do any of that. Like yeah, you know, they they you know the lot the lords of Waterdeep want his research, yada yada plot device plot device, and we're gonna join the mission kind of already in progress and avoid. We're gonna fast travel. So uh, you made it to the mountains ridges in record time. Twenty days of smooth travel from Waterdeep south to Daggerford, where you followed the Delimba River east to the foothills of the Great Peak Mountains. Since then, your travels have become less fruitful. You've now spent 32 days traversing these heavily wooded mountains, searching for any sign of the library. You haven't said it out loud, but you're all kind of wondering if you're traveling in circles. As you walk what seems like the same path you walked six days ago, uh, we've already done introductions, but tell me, what is everybody doing? Um, apparently run, wondering if we're walking in circles. 
<laughs> I would say block is just a, 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 on a mission. So it's it's kind of black and white for him in the fact that, you know, he sees his endpoint and uh, doesn't really have time to do much outside of that. Thatchery is going to have a really big book about Quailish, and it's about the same size as Thatchery because he's a small gnome and he's just got his, he's probably read it like 30 times on this trip, but he's just walking around nosing the book completely probably trips over things, hits trees, just very book first. Uh, Gank will be walking behind Thack- Thatchery, and he'll use his spear to kind of, if if he sees a, a branch going to hit Thackery in the in the face or something, he'll kind of use a spear over the top of, of his head and, and uh, get it out of the way so that he can keep reading. And uh, he's just, he's taking up the rear. All right. So, you've been traveling. You're wondering if you come in, if you've been walking in circles. If you're not lost, you're wondering if maybe this whole mission is just a waste of time. And as as you continue traveling for another couple hours, you notice a mountain peak that maybe you haven't seen before. Uh as you approach the the crest of a rolling mountain peak you spy what appears to be a floating island hundreds of feet in the air above a valley nestled in the mountains the rocky island seems to be composed of the same rocks and minerals as the mountains you've been traversing from what you can see there are trees growing on the island and water is falling to the valley below enormous chimney engines extend from the bottom of this island burning with fitful deep red fires that appear to keep the island aloft. A series of odd structures rise from the rock, appearing almost like metallic crystals. Upon further surveillance, the valley below that you thought was a valley isn't. It's actually a crater. You look straight down the precipice of the mountain, and then you can see, jutting from the cliffside, what appears to be a metal platform. Uh, I, I, I do believe that's where we need to go. All right, how are we all feeling about that metal platform on a trust level? I do not trust it as you would. Uh, Yeah, I kind of agree. Thatchery, you might want to close that book for a second. Can I flip through the book to see if there's anything about a floating island? (laughs) Uh, if you want to give me a history check, I'd love to tell you what you have learned from your book. Oh, that's that's real bad. Uh, I think my book is a little dated. I rolled a five, so that's a 16. Okay. Uh, w- with a 16, you know that Quailish, before the apparatus, was just a a middling local inventor making really bad devices. And then out of nowhere, he comes out with this device. He took all the money he made from that device and set up this library somewhere in the mountains. Um, And nobody heard from him again. There were, there were rumors of, of what might've happened to him. Um, uh, and in fact, one of the pages in your book did mention something about uh, a about a flying fortress, um, and you kind of thought it might have been like a, a mistranslation. Like, obviously, that's not very possible. Um, that a floating island would be just in the mountains and nobody discovered it. So, but now you're seeing it before you. Well, I think we have the right place, but uh, if if. Quailish built that bridge, I would not stand on it. He's not known for building things that, well, you should stand on. All right. Here's my plan. Boulder that's roughly the weight of a human, we toss it on there, see what happens. I think that is the best route we could go. Ned Flock, that's a, that's a solid idea. 
Uh, Thatchery, nothing else about an alternate entrance into this place. <laughs> and while while yeah. you're kind of thumbing through all, I guess with uh, Lindflock uh, being kind of the biggest, the baddest, we'll go and uh, we'll look for a, a boulder that we can maybe muscle over. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to feel a little emasculated as an actual giant. And I, I'm going to try to find a bigger boulder than him. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> dueling, dueling investigation checks. Let's see just yes. how big of a boulder you guys can find. Oh, this isn't good for me, but we'll do it. Uh, that's a 12 minus 1, so that's going to be an 11. Okay, that is a 9. And then that's a per investigation, you said? Uh, Yes. That's a nine plus five. <sighs> All right. So, uh, Hank, uh, you find a nice rock. You get underneath of it. You get your back and your and your and your thighs into it, and you're able to lift it up. And you turn it around and go, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And uh, Lint Flock is standing there with a boulder that's uh, about a foot bigger in diameter. Uh, so it's significantly bigger than yours. Nail it is, it is weighing on me quite a bit, and I'm like, no big deal. Uh, Thatchery has a passive investigation of 17. <laughs> I feel like maybe he just sits on a boulder that just so happens to be even bigger, <laughs> but is not aware of it at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so maybe you're like scanning like the horizon looking for the best boulder as you sit on one that is appropriately human sized it even kind of looks like a human balled up like when you're sitting around <laughs> goblin feet dangling <laughs> they don't reach the ground a goblin no what am i i'll uh i'll drop my boulder and walk around to the front of it and sit down on it and i'll, I'll kind of usher uh a lead flock forward i uh i'm, I'm gonna go uh I'm gonna go yeet that boulder onto the uh, onto the onto the platform. Uh, why don't you give me a yeet check? <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll do strength for that. One yeet check coming right up. Right, that's gonna be a 15 plus uh, strength of five, so unnatural 20. All right. So uh, you stumble your way to the edge of the mountain, uh, getting a little too close to the edge once or twice, and you're able to teeter back, and then you just hold the boulder out and drop it. Uh, you listen, you listen, it doesn't make the whistling noise like Wally Cody, but you do hear a loud crash. It crashed. Yeah, I'm going to go down and look at it. So it crashed the bridge, like it broke the bridge? No, uh, I, I said you guys were listening. So if you look okay. over the side at what happened, the boulder tumbled down the mountain and uh lint flock had a good eye on it he plinkoed it just right um and it landed on the metal press the metal what okay. call it, platform okay uh and it made a crashing noise but everything's still there um give me a perception if anybody whoever's looking at it give me a perception check Oof -da. Oof -da. uh that's uh that's a 21. That's a right. seven. That's a seven. seven. So, uh, Block, as you're looking down, like, at the metal platform, uh, you totally get distracted by a bird just flying in the distance. Yeah, that's a nat uh, one minus two. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, and... and uh, <laughs> Literally the lowest roll ever. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're still... You're still... I don't know, you're posing or something, like, after dropping your, your massive boulder over the side. Uh, so, Gank, with the 21, you do see something moving on the platform. Um, some, something big. I'll, uh, I'll grab, uh, Block's head, the Block head, and I'll kind of turn his eyes to the thing I see moving. And I'll take my spear, the the blunt end of my spear, and I'll kind of grab uh, uh, Lint Flock's chin and kind of point into the same direction. So they're kind of all, we're all three of us are peering down at the same spot. I definitely uh, where, don't see it. Uh, 
keep keep looking. It's there. Uh, but I did see a beautiful something. bird. Did you see that? That is not what I see moving. Uh, Thatchery, do you see what I see? Because I imagine it's the three of us kind of on the, the edge. And then yeah. where's, where's Thatchery in relation? Thatchery's just back on a rock in the book. <laughs> uh, but if, if you called for him, he'd come over yeah. and waddle uh, on little gnomish legs. That Thatchery, see if uh, you can see what I see. Yeah, so if you, you know, you take your time pointing and not there. No, not there. No, there. Look, look at where my finger's pointing. Um, and you're able to point out that there does appear to be something moving on the platform. Uh, can't can't make out uh, like a outline or size. Uh, it's large. Um, <laughs> bigger than a bread box. Where, um, where's the other boulder? The, the one that did not get thrown because its size was uh, not as good. Uh, it is right behind me. Uh, I mean, are we on a trust level? <laughs> How do we feel about this uh, moving object? Well, there's two ways we can go about this. In, in my opinion, in my opinion, there's two ways that we approach this. We approach this with love and kindness and hope that he does the same. Or I think I see where she's going with this. And we yeet boulder number two and hope it hits him in the head. I think for scientific purposes, I will cast light on the small boulder. So that way, when we yeet, is that how you say that? Yeet? It is a common phrase where I am from. It's fascinating. I'm going to write it down in my notebook as soon as we're done here. Uh, do you have, like, the, the, like, the language of origin? Like, can you use it in a scent? And you know, never mind. <laughs> I'm going to cast light on the boulder, and we should yeet this one as well and try to maybe hit that thing. Maybe. I don't know. I will, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do the same pickup I did before, and I'll kind of get it up, present it to be lighted, and then, uh, Prep it for yeeting. Okay. So since since this is a precision yeet, um, I actually <laughs> want you to do a dexterity check. Oh. So for a precision yeet in my country, we call that a Kobe. <laughs> I will write that one down as well. Okay, uh, I will attempt a uh, uh, Kobe. Uh, oh, shit. That's a three. So... You get a running start, right? You get to the edge and you throw this boulder. And uh, where Lip Flock kind of like plinkoed it down onto the platform, you, 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 try and, uh, you try and Uncle Rico and throw it over the mountain. <laughs> uh, so you give it a good chuck. And as the boulder that is glowing with this bright white light passes by the platform but doesn't hit anything, you do catch the, the face of this thing is is a person it's uh an uh, elven female Ooh, okay. but it's big and you all wanted to kill her i did not want to kill her i believe we should go down there and try to make contact is the plural of kobe kobe's or koba i'm taking notes i don't even have an answer for that one <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so standing on the edge, does it look like there's a, a, a trail going down? Like, cause it's kind of down into a ravine. It, am I picturing this say, correctly? Say, say, it, say it again. So we're kind of up on the edge and we just do those two boulders. Is yeah. there a trail that we could follow down or are we going to have to eat? There, there, you, 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 you're kind of surveying, um, you're kind of on the precipice, right? So you're where the, and I, the way I'm picturing these mountains is, is like, if you've ever been to Gatlinburg, they're not Rockies, right? They're kind of flowing, rolling hills stacked, packed close together. Um, so you get to the edge of one and and it's it's a drop, but it's not like stra it's not a cliff okay. straight down. Okay. Uh, so with, you know, with some managing, you could get down to the platform. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to head. I'm going to go. After I see the rock miss and I say to Steven, I think we should have gone with the other option, I'm going to head down there. Okay. Um, uh, well, everyone needs a silver tongue like Flint, and I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a slide on down with him. <laughs> Very silvery. I will, uh, I will take my the bl- blunt end of my spear, and I will kind of like put it around Thatchery and and urge him to head, and then I'll, I'll take up the back again. So kind I of like take, hurting, hurting a little bit, but can I take my shield and ride down it like on an actual sled? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. So as you go to like take your your uh spear and like you go to like move her uh him or Thatchery move, him, is he. move him uh, uh yeah move Thatchery uh he's not there uh he's hopped onto his <laughs> uh shield and he has now taken off down the hill what oh, oh, okay as i see Thatchery start to pass limp flock and i i'm going to start running just to try and keep up with him <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna turn to uh to to our friend Gank who is coming up the rear and say uh I don't know if guns have been invented yet but that seems like we're gonna need a 21 salute after it's over. <laughs> well, uh, true, best to keep up, and uh, I'll use uh, my my 50 feet of monk speed and and start running as well, seeing a uh, block take off, <laughs> leaving uh lint flock just standing there. And I will use my 30 feet of fat giant speed to kind of, you know, follow behind him. So, uh, as everybody takes their own preferred uh, (laughs) mode of transportation, uh, you all end up on the platform uh, by hook or by crook. As you make your way down to the platform, you notice a hulking beast lounging uh, lounging on it. Its body appears as that of a great lion. Uh, and its head is that of a beautiful elven female. This is a gyna sphinx. The sphinx's tail thwumps softly on the cool metal surface of the platform. Uh, it appears to have suffered some kind of injuries to its head, uh, which have been healed and replaced by mechanical components. Both the creature's eyes are glowing blue, and around its head are, uh, are and its head is orbited by a number of spinning metallic devices. As you approach the platform, it's going to look at you and say, So which one of you happened to throw the bolt? I'm just going to respond, Hail and well met. And then point to oh. Lintflock. <laughs> Hi. It was a very nice try, but you did miss. Should have went for the head. Uh, I, I I have to say that we thought you were something else. We did not uh, mean to cause you harm. Perhaps at one point I was something else. Uh, I I do see you have some embellishments on your your face. I. All I, I remember um, was flying, and then I crashed, and then Quailish, uh waking me up. Well, uh, speaking of Quailish, uh, where do we, we go to meet him? Quailish is long dead. I'm going to turn to Limp Flock and say, Is this where you make love to it? Now, I was just, you know, I wasn't thinking maybe that extreme, but I was thinking, you know, everyone <laughs> in this world wants something, a uh, creepy elf woman or otherwise. So I think that this would be a great opportunity for all of us to get what we want. So, so I think, you know, I'm going to extend the olive branch first. What do you want, my, my, um, I'm going to go with friend for fear that I'm going to choose the wrong name. I crave knowledge. 
in exchange for knowledge. I control the means to get into the island. I I will take. If you give me knowledge I do not have, I will grant you the ferry. I will uh, uh, nudge Thatchery with <laughs> my spear again. Your time to shine. <clears throat> so here's I how. I also is. crave knowledge. Hello. Hello, traveler. Shocked. Thatchery, <laughs> snap out of it. <laughs> Thatchery is stunned and amazed. So here's how this is going to work. Doesn't get out of the house. I asked often. everyone to prepare a riddle oh. to simulate the intelligence of the Gynosphinx. I am allowed to use the internet. I have 20 <laughs> seconds to try and answer the riddle. Oh, God. Uh, I think Thatchery... Do you want me to start the timer? <laughs> uh, I will happily go first if need be. Please, give me your knowledge. Well, I have all these books about words, but first maybe a puzzle. You seem like a puzzle kind of gal. I, I guess I'm assuming your pronouns, but... Uh, I, here, here, I, I, I have a riddle for you. Um, I am a word that's hardly there. Take away my start, and I'm an herbal flare. What am I? All right. Somebody want to start a timer for me? <laughs> Tell me when to go. Uh, she's going to say to you, the word is sparsely. Well, now you are very smart, and I feel like the two of us would be very good friends, because I also enjoy a riddle. Uh, does anyone else have anything to stump the big cat sphinx I believe that could I eat me? As you're talking, um, you get like a crushing headache for like a flash second. Uh, please lower your intelligence by one point. Oh no, my intelligence is all I have in the world. <laughs> Alright guys, my wisdom is negative two, so we're in trouble. I believe I might have one that can stump you. And I'm gonna step Please forward. Give me your knowledge. <clears throat> what is it that we love more than life? Fear more than death. The rich want it. The poor have it. The miser spends it. And the spend rift saves it. And let me know when you're ready. I'll start it. Uh, she's going to say to you, the answer is time. That is not correct. As, as you say that, she's going to bow to you. And then as she does, the metal balls that have been uh, orbiting around her head begin to spin a little more fast, and they begin to kind of pick up speed. And as they do, you notice a metal platform very similar to the other one begins to float down from the island. Uh, and then slowly it docks, or it pulls up next to the other one. The Sphinx is going to say to you what was the answer it is nothing and she's going to kind of look up at the sky and contemplate it and then give like a little chuckle say thank you for your knowledge it is all i have left in this in this world i must warn you though you are not the first people to come here those who come before have long since passed, and they never left the island. That's not our, uh... Must be like a timeshare deal. Well, <laughs> you have more than knowledge now. You have a friend. She will give you a bow again. And I'm gonna step onto the platform that just docked. Yeah, I'll step on there with you. 
and I'll tell you, when I say that this is a, a metal platform, it is literally that. It is a sheet of metal, no guardrails. It's just a sheet of metal. Okay, yeah, I don't have like too much fear of things like that. So, I mean, did she like, so when it docked, did it dock like behind to the side? So the way I'm imagining this is if it's a rectangle, right? The first rectangle is jutting out of the, the hillside or out of the mountain. And the other one pulls up parallel directly next to it. Like, she, you know, she's doing this with her mind and they are perfectly, they are, they're not a millimeter apart, higher or lower. They are perfectly butted up against each other. Well, I, I guess this is our lift. And I step into it. Okay. You step onto it, and right. it continues to float. As, as, as we float up, I want to I wanna kind of stand off to the side like that dog from those old cartoons and look at everyone and go, Go get here. Uh, the Sphinx is going to let out a little chuckle at that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll step on. I will take very, very slow, careful steps on. Just like convinced that I'm gonna mess it up. <laughs> this goes against the laws of physics. I don't like it. Stand. All right. So Battery. Uh, stand in the middle. Stand in the middle. In the exact middle. All right. So Thatchery's in the middle of the platform. Uh, where's everybody else? Just so I know. Yeah, I'll move towards the middle with them. As like it doesn't lose, like it doesn't tip or, or bend or anything. I'm going to step to the far side of it to let other people onto the platform. Okay. I'll be kind of, so if it's rectangular, I'll be on the right hand side, just on the edge. And yeah, okay. I'm just on there. All right. And just so you have a, a, a sense of size, um, a small bedroom. So, be big enough for everybody to comfortably stand uh if but also not huge i'm gonna be like at the, the edge like if somebody that okay. were afraid of heights would be scared i'm gonna be like right there all right so as you all hop on the balls that are orbiting the head of of the sphinx begin to spin again and the platform begins to raise towards the floating island. Uh, block, you look over the side, and as this thing begins to rise, you, you the mist that has kind of set in the mountains, uh, you cannot see the, the floor uh, from where you're at now. Uh, it's just covered in fog and low-hanging clouds in the mountains. You make it about halfway up when suddenly there's a, a flash of red light followed by about five or six others. And you now find yourself surrounded by a some kind of monstrosity. Uh, it is covered in spikes uh, and it has descended onto the platform with you. Uh, there are flying six leathery winged something or others. Uh, let's roll for some initiative. And I was two days away from retirement. <laughs> Too old for this shit. Okay. Uh. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, I have an initiative bonus of zero. Okay. <laughs> 17. Alrighty. You've so, got to be kidding me. That's a nat 1 plus 0. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, hang, hang, hang on. Uh, who had who had 20 through 15? Block 17. Block 17? I think the rest of us will be at the bottom. My roll is 6. Okay. I'm doing all this on paper tonight. I'm not using Rule 20 at all. Look at you. Look at me. 
for those of us at the bottom of this initiative, I'm gonna get out my violin and just start playing the Titanic theme. <laughs> We're going down with this <laughs> shit, boys. Uh, so, um... Who had between 15 and 10? 13. 13. Uh, right, and what's left? <laughs> I, have a, I have a 6. Okay. And I think Lidflock is at a, a 1. The largest of the, the, the monstrosities that has just apparated onto the, the platform. Uh, he's going to take a look at uh, Block standing near the edge. He's going to take a run and try and push you over the side. So I'd like you to do a uh, athletics or acrobatics check to see which is whichever one you're better at. I'm really good at both of them, but I'll go athletics. That's a 27. 19, 19 yeah. plus 8. So this, this this hulking monstrosity with with red skin and and piercing uh, barbs coming uh, protruding from all over it runs and it slams into you and your feet kind of push back for a second before you're able to kind of get your get your bearing uh, and it's not able to push you over the side. Uh, it is your turn now. Okay. Um... So I'm. How big is it? Did you say? Um, it is. It is medium. Does it? Did it fly or did it float? Uh, this particular one just apparated onto the platform with you. Oh shit! Okay, um, I'm gonna long, long sword it twice. So okay. a sixteen plus eight is a twenty a four. Okay, that hits. And then it's going to be one. I'm going to do all of the hits because I get three. A nine okay. plus eight, 17. All right, 17 points. Does, no, does 17 hit? Oh, 17 does hit. Okay, and then a three plus eight, 11. Does that hit? 11 does not hit. Okay. So let's find my D8. That's eight points of damage. And seven points of damage, so fifteen total. Fifteen total points. Yes. Okay. And how this looks, so, by the way, I have a moonbeam sword. So as it like right. comes out, it just sheds this bright light, and as it hits, it just the blade is just like a, a, if you were to imagine like a almost like a lightsaber, but blade lit up. Nice. Okay, so as you take your, your three swings, the first two, um, you know, makes a purchase. The third, he's able to push aside with one of his kind of spiny, uh, you know, like catch, maybe catch the blade with the spines and push it away. And he's going to say to you, the Bone Master will have you one way or the other. Puts the lotion in the basket. It puts the lotion in the basket. <laughs> uh, let's see. Next, uh, you notice uh, two more smaller um, uh, monstrosities with giant uh, beards uh, apparate onto the platform with you. Uh, what The first one is going to run up to Gank, and it's going to take uh, an attack with its beard. Oh, I it's, not gonna, it's not going to try to push me It's attacking? It's attacking. All right. It's attacking with the most vile attack of all. Uh, Dandruff. 20, 23 to hit. Uh, yeah, that, that hits. Okay. Uh, I need a DC 12 constitution. Oh, the day of the day. Uh, yeah, it's a 15 plus 2, 17. Okay. Uh, so as you... As its beard it takes a stab into you, um, you feel kind of an, an acidic feel to the, the wound. Uh, and it almost feels like it's going to affect you and you just kind of resolve yourself and you're able to push through it. Uh, you do take seven points of piercing damage. Mm. 
the the other the other bearded monstrosity is going to run up to you as well uh and it has a glaive it's going to take an attack with the glaive uh 16 to hit uh yeah that hits all right uh i need you to make another constitution saving throw please oh that's a 16 plus two all right um you take 11 points of slashing damage as the glaive uh sinks into your shoulder hi 11 uh yes okay all right uh you now notice there's also three uh smaller imp like creatures uh flying along with the the ferry up to the island uh, one, uh, two of them are going to fly down, and they're going to try and grab uh, Thatchery. No. So uh, I, oh, we're going to do sorry. strength checks for this Thatchery. Uh oh. Is the are are these strength saving throws or just strength checks? Uh, I believe we will do saving throw for this. Okay. Well, that's. Uh, I don't know if that's better. No, it's the same. Well, so one of those is a 12 and the other was a natural one. So two. Okay. Um, so you rolled, you rolled a two? I rolled a two. Okay. So as these two imps begin kind of flying around and, and at your head and you're kind of get them off, get them off, get them off, uh, one of them is able to grab the back of your shirt and it's gonna toss you over the side. Well, all right then, there I go. Hey, thanks for playing. I'm it was nice knowing you. Uh, this is the Dark Souls of D&D, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so at, as you're falling over the side, um, I'm imagining you're just, you're still trying to think about like, there's gotta be a way out of this. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, and we'll go back to the rest of the party. Um, it is now Gang's turn. Uh, okay, good. So I s see Thatchery falling off. Is he falling off on my side or... Because I'm on one edge. I, I imagine if we're going up, I'm on the right side, passenger side going up. Okay. Which edge did Thatchery get taken off? I, I think I in my mind I would have thought the right side. Okay, so... As I see him falling, I, as a bugbear, I have long limbs, so I have a 10 foot reach plus my spear. Can I swing it down as my action and try to uh, give him something to hang on to? Yeah. Is he, um, is he close enough to the, to the platform? Yeah. I think the imps kind of just uh, gave him like a push and a roll towards the edge and he kind of slipped off right at the edge. So okay. if you want to do a, uh, dexterity check. <sighs> You're making me dex. I uh, mean, do you quickness. want me to blow on your dice virtually for you? Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a that's a fifteen plus one, so sixteen. Okay, 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 okay. okay. I'm trying that tree. <laughs> Don't fuck me, Gil. As you see her roll over the side. E no, 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 no. And you throw out your arm with your staff. She, he gets his hand on it and it just slips. Oh, I still have my staff, my spear. You still have your, you still have your spear. Uh, that you was unable to make any, any grab. Um, um, let's see. Uh, how much do I care about that tree? So here's what I will do. Uh seeing him not be able to grab on and slip out, I will swan dive off the side and attempt to grab and I will use my monk slow fall ability. Uh to it'll help reduce any damage. But so I will jump off and, and grab that tree. Okay. If I can still, if I can still do this all in one turn, I'll I'll spend it. I will take it as your movement. 
Uh, okay. You're going to Tom Cruise, like, put your arms behind you, like, make yourself as, yeah. like, aerodynamic as possible. And yeah. just... Uh, you are able to grab onto your... Uh, oh. Grab onto him, and you're now both falling. Just hang on. And uh, so I have slow fall. Uh, let, let me read. Uh, you can use your reaction when you fall to reduce any falling damage taken by 50. So I, I will use my reaction to uh, okay. reduce that damage. So as you continue falling... Uh, uh, you know, you you start meditating and 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 saying whatever words it is under your breath that you say to to make this happen, and you both uh, begin to fall slowly. All right, Lint, flock, it's your turn. <laughs> okay, I'm 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 like eight and a half, nine feet tall. I think I'm gonna try to use that to my advantage here. I'm a I'm one of the giant people. Um, okay. I have 50 feet of rope. Here's the plan. I'm going to... Can, can, can I tie the rope to one of my short swords? Because that's all I got. Throw my short swords to them. They'll probably take some damage, but at the end of the day, it's probably better than the small damage. And then, if if need be, I can, like, hang on the ledge, giving me that, that extra 10 feet. Or, you know, 9 feet, 8 feet, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Um, you can make that like 14 different checks and we can just have a real field day with this if you want. You were standing in the middle, correct? I'm going to say that because you're in the middle, you quit, can't make it over to the edge in time to try and save all this. Because if you think about it, like it's all happening very fast. Um, I, I think you were probably kind of frozen in the middle to start. Sorry, bro. Okay. I have option two. Can I take my rope, tie it to the giant dude and try to push him over? Maybe he'll swing like a pendulum and they can grab onto him. That's that's all I got. Uh I think I think I think the moment has passed. Alright, I'm just gonna stab the big guy. Stab the big guy. I am doing dual weapons, so how many how much how much damage am I supposed to be? Do I roll twice for that? Uh, for dual weapon, you're going to roll. That's uh, two separate attack rolls. Okay, the first one is going to be an 18. The second one is going to be a 21. Both of those hit. All right. And that's just a regular old D6. All right, so that does, uh, that does 10 plus the 4. Okay, I'm pretty, that does 18. Correct? Is that how that does? Let me double check. Hold on. One second. One second. Hold on. Okay. I got to look at the... Uh... Oh, no. Okay. We'll just call it a 10 because I rolled two fives on my D6s. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you you stand there for a second. You're trying to contemplate what to do. And then you just run up and... Uh, you, I'm sorry. You said you have a sword? I have two short swords. Two short swords. So uh, you'll kind of flip one of your short swords and then run in and take a slice and a slice, uh, and you do 10 points of damage. Uh, as you do, he, uh, the the barbed creature lets out a scream, and uh, it is its turn. Uh, it is going to continue trying to push Block over the side. Uh, so if you want to do a strength save at this point, Block. It's a 25. Again, it just pushes against you, and this time you're prepared for it, and you're able to push it back a little bit. And I think as you guys are in the corner, you're both kind of, in a way, standing near the edge. Uh, so it, it, it's going to growl at you, uh, and it is your turn. <clears throat> Does it look hurt? Not really. Okay, I'm going to sheath my sword. And I'm going to cast Crown of Madness on it. So one humanoid of your choice that you can see within range must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become charmed by you for the duration. All right, wisdom save. Yeah, the DC's 13. Not very high. It's a 14. Okay. <laughs> I'll just stand there looking at the... Okay. 
Uh, the 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 bearded fiend is going to run up to Lint Fluck, uh, and it's going to attempt to take a stab with its beard. To that is a nine. I'm guessing that does not hit. To who? It does not. Now, a quick question for you: Is this a large monster? The no, it is not. It is a medium. Damn it! I mean, yay! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the imps. Uh, two of the imps now descend on you, Lint Flock, and they're going to take uh, an attack. Uh, 23 to hit and an 11 to hit. Oh yeah, that 23 just breezes right by. <laughs> yeah, uh, the 23 hits, the 11 does not. Okay. Alright, so, uh, can you give me a constitution save, please? Alright, that is an 8 plus... Oof. That is an 8 plus oof. That's a 10. Bye, guys, I'm poisoned! <laughs> Alright, so, uh, as... As these imps descend on you, oh one of God. them is able to get a bite in uh, on your cheek, and you take five points of piercing damage and nine points of poison damage. All right, it is now your turn, Lint Fluck. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna um, I'm gonna you, I'm gonna try to throw the big dude over again. Okay. Uh, give me a strength check. Okay, that is going to be a, a 17. All right, so as Block and the barbed monster are fighting, you're able to get a charge in on it, and it does knock over the side. Uh, as I as I hit him with that linebacker tackle, I'd like to just say, Odele, miho, and then just throw him over the edge. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, and as he's falling over the side, he'll, uh, he'll say, This isn't the end of this. Uh, as he's falling. Uh, the other, the other monsters, uh, they see the large one go over the side, and they all look at each other, and then they just disappear in a spark of red light. Uh, back to Gank and Thatchery. You're falling. Uh, slowly. And then suddenly you're not falling anymore. You're in the dark. Uh, and you appear to be on some... Some... S stone, maybe? Or metal? You're not sure. What does it... What happened? I believe we were... Or I was kobe I think is the right word. That's... We're using the words that we have learned today. You know, word yeah. of the day, calendar. I, I got one of those. Oh! Uh, what happened? I was preparing to do something real stupid. But this <laughs> is better. This I'll, is much better than what I was thinking of doing. Slightly. Uh, I'll... I'll kind of like feel the ground. Is it? Does my dark vision cut through any of the the darkness? Yeah. So uh, with your dark vision, you're able to tell that you appear to be behind bars. Um, you are in a room with six cells, and you are both in uh, the back right hand cell together. They didn't oh. even get their two hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. I'm very small. Can I fit through the bars? <laughs> yeah, let's try this. Uh, what? Uh, we'll do acrobatics because I think you're gonna have to like contort and well, twist a little bit. Then I will use my uh, uh what is it called? I have a thing. Um, <laughs> I have a thing. It's uh. I will use my channel divinity knowledge of the ages to gain proficiency in acrobatics before I attempt this. <laughs> All right, go for it. <laughs> All right, proficient in acrobatics. Um, 
Oh no, that's good. That's a 19. All right. Uh, you get a good look at the bars and you're trying to, to figure out uh, how this is going to work. And you get just the perfect angle and you're able to slip out of the bars. There's no way I'm following you. Well, use you, you use your muscles and just err. <laughs> I will uh, try to separate these bars and just kind of spread them a little bit enough to fit through. Uh, strength check. Oh, that's what I'm good at. Let's see. That's. Oh uh, yeah. Then never mind. <laughs> I rolled a three. Yeah, so, you give it your best try. Uh, they're not budging. Am I going athletics or just straight strength? Strength. Okay, yeah, so that's a six total. Okay. Um, I am not following you through these bars. I guess this is another example of uh, brains being mightier than brawn. I'm going to look for a key. Can I find a key somewhere? Yeah, you can give me a perception check. Do you have dark vision? I don't know. Do gnomes have dark vision? I think gnomes do, but half. I don't know. Don't. Chat, do you know? Do I have dark vision? Oh. Chat, now is your time to lie through your goddamn teeth. I do. I do have dark vision up to 60 feet. Okay. All right. Yeah, give me a perception check. Let's see what you find. All right. Perception. Oh, I'm good at that. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's a 22. With a 22, your dark vision is on point. Uh, you look around. Uh, there is a spot, like a hook by the door. Uh, like a key hook. But there's not one currently there. But there is a door. All right. I have another idea. Can I use my tinker tools to make a key? <laughs> Out of, I don't know, like a, a bolt or something? So describe this for me. How how are you using your tinker's tools? I'm gonna I'm gonna get a bolt, which I'll probably might have to get from my friend. Do you have any like bolts or arrows or sharp <laughs> uh, small things? I I have a dart. Here, I will take I, it. Uh, yeah, I'll pull out a dart and toss it over to well, you. I'll take it and I'll like kind of look at the lock and like hit the air or the dart a couple times and like look at the lock again and try to like put it in and test it and I don't know make like a lock pick or something with sure it. yeah make a check uh tinker's tools would use what skill I believe it is dexterity dexterity um okay that's not very good that's just a 13. You know, these kind of bill crudely put together, these prisons. Uh, I, I think with a 13, you're, you, you're, you give it some time. Uh, you take the appropriate time. And as you're messing with it, you're, you, you just thought that this is not working. And then click, Whoa. the door of the cell is open. We're going to go back to the other to the other group. Okay. So, uh, block and let flock. Uh, as... As the 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 larger of the monsters goes over the side, and the other ones disappear, the two of you are now on the platform as it begins to reach the top. Did, well, we made it. Did you want to say a few words, or do you want me to say a few words? Or I did not know them well enough to say words. You're muted, them. Bob. Just you guys. Sorry. The whole chat caught that. <laughs> Um, I did not know them well enough to say words. Oh, thank God I didn't either. So we just move on, right? I'm, I'm going to go quickly. I'm, I'm going to quickly look over the edge and just go, uh, uh, s uh sayonara, amigos. And then I'm going to go back and be like, yep, let's keep going. They will probably be fine. Yeah, I don't see them. I didn't hear a splat. That's always a good sign when you fall to your death but never hit the ground, right? Yeah, they're fine. Okay, so yeah, as it hits, what are we seeing up there? <laughs> so as you reach the top, it comes to a silent stop again, perfectly in line with 
the the dock. Uh, you now see the top of the island. Protruding from the rock all over are glimpses of what appears to be some kind of like spaceship. Uh, you don't have words for it in 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 you know your world, uh, but it is tropey sci-fi stuff. You know, beeps and boops and and metal and uh, glowing crystals pushed through trees that have since petrified. Chunks of metal ground and smashed with such force it seems to have melded to the rock. In the center of the island is a two-story metallic structure the size of a large house. There are green lights shining brightly in every window, casting a uh, green glow and hum. Uh, be... Oh, go ahead. You you look around closer to your immediate surroundings. The dock is exactly like the dock at the bottom of the of the mountain. It's just a metal platform, but off to the side, underneath of a tree, uh, is what appears to be a construct just sitting by the docks it is covered in vines um what would you like to do okay so the first thing that we came across was friendly the second thing we came across i think we can agree violently hostile so as of right now we got a real 50 50 on our hands uh, i think we should try love you know what? I haven't heard something like that since a Deadhead concert. Let's get in there, friend. <laughs> Alright, uh, yeah, I'll walk f first. Okay. As you get closer, um, <clears throat> give me a perception check. Not my strong suit. Well, that's a 14. The 14? Yeah. Yeah, so as you get closer to it, uh, it this is what we would all know is a robot. Um, it is a metal construct. It has a little metal mustache. Um, and it is rather bulbous. It is not a nimble looking robot. It's clunky. Uh, very crude. Um, and you notice that there's it appears to be some kind of cord or cable that has a matching spot where you might be able to push it in. I push it in. Okay. As you do, a green light begins blinking on the chest of the robot. I'm going to take three steps back. I rolled a zero on my perception, so I'm just standing there going, I do not understand modern art. The light's just blinking. Can I tap the light to the rhythm of the blink? As you approach and <laughs> tap the light, the light is going to go solid green, and you're going to hear what sounds like motors and servos kind of turning and cogging. And uh, the robot is... Huh, huh, oh, uh, who, who are you, and where am I? I am Block. I do not uh, know where you are. I am uh, a Flintlock and a Mountains. How? How? Oh, yes. Um, the mountains. Uh, the flying island. Oh, oh no! I, I was, I was running. Um, we, we, we need, we need, we need to do something. Something very, very bad has happened here. Um, I level of one to Kardashians. How bad? Courtney. <laughs> It's, it's the Chloe. <laughs> oh god, we gotta burn it down and start over, kids! Um, I, uh, I, uh, I'm, I, I, my name's Quailish. Uh, this was my place before I died. Um, this is what's left of me. And as he says that, he's going to, like, stand, and there's going to be creaking and rust, you know. Uh, oh, you okay? Rusty, yeah. Uh, and he's going to stand up and kind of brush off the vines. Uh, and he's going to say, Um, did you, you, you came up on the ferry? Did, 
Did anybody fall over at the side? Hmm. Ah, well. No. <laughs> if. So it's just the, the two of you that. That doesn't make any sense. Do you know how dangerous this place is? Yeah, they tried to kill us quite a few times now. Let me just say that your welcoming party needs a lot of work. Oh, that's, that's not my welcoming party. Um, I, I opened the wrong portal. I, uh, this was, this thing floating is, uh, they call it a planar vessel. And, uh, it travels between, like, different dimensions. And, um, I found it crashed. And, uh, I found my, my device. You, you know, you know, the, the Quailish apparatus, right? Well, that's, that's mine. Um, and I brought it back and I made some money on it. But then I thought, um, the real money is in portals and being able to move stuff from place to place very quickly and finding new inventions and new people and lots of money to be made. So I started experimenting with the portals and I saw some nice places and I was very happy with the results until I opened the last portal. That portal was to the Nine Rings of Hell. I don't know. We have, or I know. We have, we have to close the portal. It has to be done. There are devils all over this place. Uh, lots of them. And they are taking people from the surrounding country and putting them through the portal and making them slaves in hell. And we have to stop it. Well, I believe we are going to need help. And there just so happened to be another party that was adventuring with us at the same time. Oh, okay. So, we, you just lie. Okay. Um, well, the good thing. Where Do you know where they are now? They did fall off. All right, then. Uh, well, you know, if you showed some concern, maybe I, maybe I could have helped you with your friends. Um, I mean, the um, fact of the matter is, they're not, they're not that far away. But when you say friends, that's where we differ. Okay. I would like the so, record to show that I did everything in my power to save him, but he let him go. <laughs> record noted. So, would you like to get your friends back? I would like to get the party we were adventuring with back, yes. Okay. Well, if you want to get your friends back, uh, you might need these. Uh, it'll be helpful. Trust me. So he's going to stomp over <laughs> behind the tree and he's going to throw, pick up a, what looks like a metal case, um, but kind of like a briefcase, and he's going to throw it uh, to you, block. Okay. I'm going to open it. As you appear inside it, um, you've got some experience uh, with gunslingers um, and have seen some of their apparatuses. Uh, but this thing, I mean, this thing looks like the fever dream of a tinkerer. Uh, it is slick, sleek, black gunmetal. Um, it is space age stuff. And there are four laser rifles inside of the case. I'm going to take one out and throw it to Lint Flock. All right. Yay. Uh, so, uh, as you look at it, Lint Flock, uh, roll a 1d4 for me, please. For some reason, I feel like this is bad, but it's a one. <laughs> okay. Uh, your rifle has one charge left in it. It does 3d8 radiant damage. I'll pick one up out of there, too. Okay. Roll your d4. It was bad. That's a four, baby. All right. You have four charges. Um, as this is going on, uh, we can go back to uh, to Gank and Thatcher. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, 
Thatchery, uh, how do we, where do we go now? Because I, I assume the door's open now and I can freely walk out. Um, if you want to open, yeah, if you want to try and open the door. Well, yeah, seeing that, didn't, Thatchery, didn't you get the it unlocked? Mm-hmm. Yes, I with did. The, with your makeshift dart? Yep. Slash key? Yeah, okay. so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll push it open. All right, uh, so I'm, I'm not understanding. Are you pushing the door to the outside of this place open? Oh, no, my jail, jail cell okay. door. Yeah, the jail I'll, cell yeah, swung, open. Wide, swung wide okay. open. Uh, yeah, and then uh, now now where? Uh, I, I, this is our only option, yeah. I think we have to go through that closed door. Uh, let's do it. I'll, I'll go, uh, yeah, and seeing, seeing the hesitancy in uh, Thatchery's uh, demeanor, I will walk in front and <laughs> I'll, I'll push open the door. Okay. So as you open the door, uh, you are you being secretive uh, about this? Well, I guess seeing that we've been kind of pwned a little bit, well, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it first. And uh, you peek outside, and you do notice um, this devil, um, completely covered in chains, and the chains are kind of dragging on the ground uh, with him. And by his sides are two imps, and they appear to be patrolling the area. They are currently facing away from you. Okay, and then down the other way? So is it a hallway that I'm looking at, and they're at one end? No. Uh, You open the door. You are looking to the outside. Cool. You see trees. Um, You do see some, some metal and some crystals, like, jutting out of the rocks. Does Not it, anything you've ever seen before. Okay. Does it feel like we're down? Like, because we fell, does it feel like we're down and we need to go up? Or can I tell? Um, give You give me a perception check. I am rolling poo-poo today. Uh, that's a 13. You look up. You don't see any mountains above you mm. for the first time in a month and a half. All right. I'll, uh, I'll quietly close the door. Uh, Thatchery, I have no idea where we are. Uh, there are no mountains, and there are a couple friends out there. I am not the best at sneaking past unwanted attention. Um, so if we want to just, you know, not try to do that, I can make you tougher, and we can just go poo poo poo. Oh. If that what is if, what. Uh, yeah, I'm okay at sneaking. Uh, what if you just climb on and I. Uh... That would be all right, too. I just didn't want to impose because I didn't want to assume that I get a free ride due to my <laughs> stature. But if you're uh, offering, I will take it because I'm not big on the walking yeah, thing. Uh, I will I will wear you like a backpack, um, like Yoda and Luke Skywalker. And. Uh, I I'm, I want to try to sneak out of this and get into some cover that is out of this room. Okay, give me a stealth check. Okay. I actually I want two stealth checks. I want to see if you're able to get some cover, and then I want a second okay. stealth check. All right, first one was a six plus five. <clears throat> oh, man, I am rolling. And that's a three plus five. So an 11 and an eight. So you look out the door and you're able to see some shrubbery and trees that you think you could get into and then hunker down and maybe sneak along. Uh, You make it to the edge of that and then just you're so paying attention to whether the devils have seen you or not. You step on a a, a twig and it snaps. That's right. And I'll immediately kind of like drop down into any bush or shrub that uh, we're in okay as the chain devil turns around it's going to let out a scream and the two imps are going to turn around and we're going to roll initiative all right i grabbed a new d20 here we go i am so sorry my uncle can be a real dick (laughs) uh rolled a one 
15. All right, so we got uh, 15 for Thackeray. What was everybody? Who? Had, what was everybody else? You had a one. Okay, Linflock. Oh, I didn't realize I was rolling too. All right, here we go. That's an 18. Okay, and block. 18. So, as as Block and Linflock are talking to Robo Quailish, uh, you hear a scream about a hundred feet to the west and through the trees. Block, you start us off. Um, I'm just going to run towards the screen. So I'm going to just double dash. Okay. So 60 feet that gets closer. You 60 feet closer? Yeah. Okay. So uh, when you get to within 40 feet, you are definitely able to see that there are is a chain devil and, and, and two imps that are running towards... Uh, that are running towards some bushes. Okay. All right. Uh, next is one of the imps' turn. Uh, it's going to fly up into the air, uh, and it's going to it's going to see if it can spot you guys in the brush. Uh, I think with the twelve, uh, I it, it it gives it a try, and it's just not able to to see you. Uh, Thatcher, you're next. All right, cool. That's that's just great. There's a big demon, and I'm just gonna cast spiritual weapon right by the chain demon devil, whatever it is, his head. Okay, what does your spiritual weapon look like? <laughs> it's a giant magnifying glass, and when it appears, <laughs> it makes the eyes of the demon look just real big. <laughs> and then it smacks him in the face. All right, so. Uh... I gotta remember how spiritual weapon works. It, it's not a roll, right? You automatically get it because it's next to the, the the creature, correct? Uh, no. I I believe I make a melee spell attack against it. So to bring out the weapon, it's a bonus action, and then to use it. Ah, it's a roll. Okay. Yeah. Yup. Go ahead and roll. Oh, that's not good. That's real bad. That would be a uh. 12. 12 does not hit. Okay. Then for so my... You... Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, as as you start praying to your deity, the the magnifying glass that you have used before and, and really s- simplifies who you are, uh, it appears and it takes a swing, but the chain devil is able to duck underneath of it. Ah, uh, shit. Uh, Lint Flock, you're next. Okay, I wasn't gonna do this, but I am feeling inspired, baby. Uh, I'm going to scream as loud as I can with my biggest, like, war, like, my war cry. I'm gonna try to get their attention. Okay. Um, why don't you roll an intimidation check for that? I like it. That's going to be a 12 plus intimidation, demon, negative one, 11. They are not afraid of what can only probably sound like. One of the imps turns at the noise and sees you and lets out a proper impish scream, high pitched shrill scream. And it's going to start flying towards you. Uh, let's see. Gank, you're up. So, Quentin, before Gank goes, sorry to interrupt. Would it have passed me 40 feet ahead? Or 40 feet away? I think it got just in uh, in front of you. Maybe out of melee range, but just 10, in front 10, of you. 10, 15 feet, maybe? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. All right. Uh, Gank, you're up. All right. So how far are these... The chain devil and the two imps. One imp is elevated. One, and the other uh, both went. both of the imps are elevated. Uh, the chain demon is probably about fifty feet away from you. Okay. And then above, how far? How high above are the imps? Um, oh, 10, 10 feet. Okay, so I'm up. okay. Shoot, I'm gonna get up, and I'm gonna go into full on sprint and go towards the chain devil and I'm going to do uh, two unarmed strikes. Well, 
a spear, and an unarmed strike. Go for it. All right. I'm on to my fourth D20 tonight. We'll see if this does any better. So this is my spear attack as I'm trying to like get it in, 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 in him. Uh, that's uh, an 11 plus 9, 20. 20 hits. To hit. Uh, and I'm using both hands, so I get uh, a D8 damage. Okay. Uh, wow, that's a 2 plus 5. That's 7 points. And okay. then I'll, I'll pull it out and I'll do like a kidney punch. Uh, into its uh, rib cage. Okay. With my my second attack. Uh, that's a seventeen plus seven. Yeah, that one hits. Uh, two, six. That's five plus. That's eight points of uh, bludgeoning damage as it comes in. And I'll use my bonus action to uh, do one more unarmed strike. Okay. Uh, that's a seventeen to hit. That does it. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a six. That's nine points of bludgeoning as I pull the spear out and just <clears throat> quickly get two, two jab shots in under its uh, rib cage there. Okay. It is the Chain Devil's turn. Uh, it's going to make an attack with its... Actually, it's going to use... As you're now standing face-to-face -face with this thing, its eyes are going to roll back in its head. And it's going to start uh, chanting in... Uh, I believe it's Abyssal for, for doubles. Uh, or, I'm sorry, an Infernal. It's going to start chaining an Infernal. And four chains are going to appear out of the ground. Uh, blazing hot red. Uh, and they... Okay, I'm re just reading, sorry. Okay, and as it raises it, uh, the, the four chains are going to kind of sw start swirling around you. Uh, and it's going to take an attack with its chain. Mm -hmm. Uh, 18 to hit. Yep. Alright, that's nine points of slashing damage. Okay. And then one of the animated chains is going to attempt to grapple you as well, so I need a strength save. Yeah, uh, so a as the chain starts to wrap around you, you're able to um, kind of keep keep yourself rigid and, and try and fight it and get your get your arm up around where it's trying to wrap around your neck, and you're able to keep it from, from grappling you. Uh, let's see, next in the turn is Block. I am going to wait. So the imp by me hasn't seen me yet, correct? Uh... No, he's very focused on uh, Lint okay. right now. So I'm going to cast um, Dust Devil, which okay. is you choose an unoccupied space, five foot cube of air that you can see within range. An elemental force that resembles a Dust Devil appears in that cube and lasts for the spell's duration. Any creature that ends its turn within five feet of the Dust Devil may, must make a strength throw. So I can see the chain the devil, correct? Yes, you can, So I'm yes. going to put it right on him. Okay. Uh, so the air next to the to the chain devil begins to swirl violently, very rapidly, as a dust cloud with a menacing kind of face uh, appears. Uh, so it's at the start of its turn? At the... E Yes, correct. Okay. All right. Um, next up is a battery. Oh, rat. Um, I'm gonna. Oh gosh, I'm gonna do like a little gnomish run back and forth as I panic and try to figure out what to do. I don't know what to do. Uh, banishment on the big chain devil. Banish it fifth yeah. level. Thank you. Go bye bye. All right. That is a charisma saving throw. Uh, what's this? What's the save? Fifteen. So, what does this look like as he's banished? Um. Okay. So I he speaks infernal, and I speak infernal because I speak all the languages. So I'm gonna switch to infernal and just be like, "You do not belong in a library. You will burn the books." And poof, he just poofs out of there. Okay. Uh, yeah, so he is, he is gone. 
Um, and anything else for your turn? I believe my spiritual weapon is going to smack one of the imps. Oh, if it can right. reach. Uh, yeah, so the one that is trying to fly around and find um, Gank is close enough for you to... Yeah, you can take an attack on him if you want. Oh, that's better. That's uh, 18. All right, that hits. Uh, what does spiritual weapon do? I don't know. Uh, 1d8. That's this. Uh, six points of damage. This? Okay. Uh, nine. Sorry. Nine. Okay. Three. So, nine so, as as your spiritual magnifying glass slowly moves in on the imp, it takes a a rare back and it smacks him across the head and he falls to the ground dead. Uh, next up is Lintflock. Alright, so I got the one imp who's making his way towards me, correct? Y- yes. I, I, I think we gotta I think we gotta shoot him out of the air. Right? Brilliant plan. I like it's it. A bold, it's a bold strategy, Cotton. Uh, that's gonna be a. Uh, what am I using? Am I using Dex for this? Uh, so you said your oh with your with your gun. Uh, yeah, yeah. Use Dex with it. Uh, well, he's definitely fine. Cause that's gonna be a three. <laughs> Dang it! I might as well just shoot myself in the mouth with this thing at this rate. So you, how many, you had one shot, right? Oh yeah, I just <laughs> wasted it. Just pew, straight yeah. past his head. Uh, so uh, yeah, you take your shot and you try and aim it up and you have no idea how this thing works because uh, we didn't get to give you instructions on it. Uh, so you're oh. like fumbling with it and while you have it turned sideways, it's actually going to shoot and it's going to leave a giant hole inside of a tree like where it just burned through the tree. <laughs> that would have been useful. Uh, I'm now just gonna take my. Uh, I'm pretty sure I get the uh, bonus attack, correct? And no, no, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm insane. Maybe I am insane. You have. You should have a second attack. Yep. Right? Yep. Yep. Right there. Yeah, because I'm the. I'm a ranger. Level whatever. Yeah. Right. <laughs> correct. Maybe not. I don't see it. I'm gonna say no. You're level ten ranger. You have a second attack. Okay, well then in that case, I don't have a ranged weapon. All I have is short swords and he's an imp. God, uh, guide my hand. Can I throw a sword at him? Uh, yeah, give, give, give me a dex check. What kind of ranger doesn't take a bow? <laughs> <laughs> That's an, a nine plus. What's, what's, what's your modifier? Count there, my buddy? fingers. A two-ish? Three? <laughs> I mean, one's a thumb. Are we counting the thumb? Fair enough. It's a three again. <laughs> uh, Thanks, Steven. <laughs> so that's a 13 total, right? Or a 12 total? No, that's a three. My dex is plus zero. <laughs> plus, plus I just rolled there. two threes in a row, dog. No, I got a nine showing on my side. I'm Here's rolling... You're using no. Roll twenty, right? No, I'm using this wizards thing. Oh, okay. Wizards okay. of the East Coast or whatever. This little thing. <laughs> wizards of the East Coast. Yeah, you know the Google thing. Oh, um, okay. Thanks, All right, so Google. You, you take your short sword and you try and and, and aim it up, uh, line it up, and you throw it, and uh, you've never thrown a sword in your life before, and it nope. it's just like. Kind of goes wibbly wobbly and then falls to the ground. Uh, a couple, uh, 20, 25 feet away from me. No, I know I'm out of actions, but I would like to take this moment before the imp comes down to accept my death. All right, it is uh, Block's turn. Okay. So did the imp go? Did I miss that? No, the one imp is still there. Thatchery killed one of them. The chain devil has been banished. Okay. Well, then I'll just come on, roll up and hit the, uh, 
Okay. The other imp. All right, so let's do this. Uh, 15 for the first attack. Uh, that hits. Okay, second attack is a 27. That hits. Okay, that hits. And then a 28 a crit, baby. So uh, 28, 27, and a 15 is what I said. Mm-hmm. Okay. So 3 plus, what is my... Three plus six is nine, ten, and then are we doing double or roll twice for the crit? Uh, we'll do double, just for ease. Eleven, so sixteen. Shit, I forgot the numbers it did. It's fine. You, you it's an, it's an imp. You have overkilled this thing. Fatality, <laughs> brutality. I'm sorry. Uh, this thing is a grease pile. Nice, I like it. And then I'm gonna try and run as far as I can. I think they're 40 feet away, so I'll get 30 feet from Gank and Thatchery. Okay, uh, so you're running up to them? Yes, correct. Okay. All right, so we'll drop out of initiative order at this time. Uh, so yeah, uh, you don't know where they're at. You just saw something screaming at some at some bushes. Who, where? Nobody do anything for a minute, or he comes back. Does it come back? Well, it's a demon, so it, it should probably not come back, because demons aren't normally from this plane. Just... That's a hurtful stereotype. <laughs> well, I don't know about real demons, I just know what I know in books. Fair enough. Well, we need to make it inside. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna look for like a trail or a path, like may, these guys were patrolling. How far up does their patrol path go? And and see if I can find something. Hopefully, run you, into. You hear a thump, thump, thump kind of noise, as uh, Robo Quailish, uh comes from behind a tree. Um, I can help you find the way. I know. That would uh, be great. At this point, our uh, lint flock and block. With flock and block. Worst That's name sweet. combination ever. <laughs> Are they down? Oh, I see a you do taxes in your off season. <laughs> Lynn flock and block. Uh, <laughs> CPA. Uh, are they are they down with us now? Like we're all together? Uh, yeah, if you said something out loud, they probably would have heard you. Okay. So I imagine the whole party's together. I'm actually saying that in character voice. My bad. <laughs> uh, where do we go now? Uh, this guy says he knows the way. This is it's our not... new friend. And I point to Quailish. This is Quailish. Hmm. He's a modern art installation. Like the Quailish. That like is what like he the Quailish in my book? That is what he says. Technically just his consciousness. Quailish died long ago. I have so many questions for you. Would you like to be on my podcast? Because I, I just, I have so many questions. And I just, I want to pick your brain about just like everything. I will be happy to talk to you later. We, we, we really need to close this portal. Like, now. Um, I'm going to schedule uh, you port- in. Yeah, pen, pen, pencil me in. Okay. The, the portal, it's inside the control room uh, on the ship. Up at the top. Um, I, well, I, we can go right there right now. I just know we're heading into something really bad. Um, you guys, you will need these. And he'll open up the briefcase and give Gank and Thatchery each one of the laser rifles. So you can roll 1d4 to figure out how many charges you have. Well, they're not as intuitive as you think. That's a three. Uh, I'm just gonna hand mine to Lint Flock. Because <laughs> I probably should not have a gun. <laughs> yes! I should have a gun. <laughs> there you go. You're the ranger. 
<laughs> In theory, you should be better with that. Dex. Yeah, so, uh, Quillish. Could this, could this count as, like, a short rest and I can roll I some think so. dice? Yeah, okay. yeah, I, I, I usually do 15 minutes as a short rest just to catch your breath, so. I'll roll the dice in the background. I can do yeah. some healing, too, if people are in need. Anyone need a healing word or a... Uh, not if I take a short rest, I'll save okay. it. Save it. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of fast travel here. Uh, Quailish takes you to the entrance to what is, uh, as I said, was like a two-story metallic house. Basically, it's like the command console for what would have been the planar vessel when it wrecked. He takes you inside there, and you're able to kind of sneak your way through uh, to the very edge of the control room where the portal is uh you're able to see because there's some windows and some glass that inside of there is a large crescent shaped metallic thing with a green spiraling circle inside of it you see a whole mess of demons and you see what is to this day the largest uh devil you've seen uh he is covered in bones and he seems to be the guy in charge. He is ordering around imps and chain devils. And they're in the process of taking some some humans through the portal. What are the odds he's open to talking it out? You're welcome to find out. I have a spell that I would like to cast that will increase our odds. But they will catch us the minute I cast it. So just let me know. Uh, and I'm going to just be... Hand on a uh, block you swords, right? Now, uh, now I'm going to offer up some logic, and you can all decide how you feel about it. <laughs> the first encounter we had, we were able to talk it out. The second encounter we had, we were not able to talk it out. The third encounter we had, we were able to talk it out, and we got guns. This is the fourth, fourth, fourth encounter, and I'd say by all means. Oh no, then then we fought the, the demon guy, weren't able to talk it out. The next obvious thing to do would be to talk it out. Da, 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 da. I, I, I don't think that's going to work. We have the jump on them. We can get a couple shots in before they uh, get, get wind of us. I hold my gun backwards and say, I agree. <laughs> I'll, I speak I'll, infernal, I'll but I around. would need someone to tell me what mm -hmm. to say. I think we should just shoot it, all three of us, at once. Ah, the American tactic. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll aim my laser rifle at the big one. Yeah, me too. Uh, okay. I yep, will too. cast... Uh, who had the four charges on their weapon? That was Block, no, right? Yes, that was me. I will cast Holy Weapon on your gun. What does that do? You do an additional 2d8 radiant damage. <laughs> you get a nuke, nuke this is, thing. Is this, uh, would this be considered a surprise attack? If we're all, like, lining up? Yeah. To okay. Yeah, I, I think that, yeah, I don't think okay. they're in, uh, aware at all. Okay, so as a bugbear, I get an extra 2d6 damage if it's a surprise attack on my first attack. Oh, we're gonna around. nuke this thing. Alright. Can we roll? Uh, Can we roll? Can we roll? Give me I your, got the give hit first. Rolls. Give me your attack rolls. It's a dex, right? Yes. Uh, 14. Oof. Four. Just <laughs> <laughs> a four. I, I'm rolling like shit, man. It's just a regular roll 16. So as you <laughs> all three all kind of poke around the corner, do your best to take the shot. Uh, none of you are prepared for the recoil on these things. <laughs> and all three of you kind of shoot wildly <laughs> as, uh, I mean, you're the good guys, so they're blue lasers. Uh, at blue lasers, uh, like G.I. Joe, uh, uh, are going to go f shooting past uh, the Bone Master, he's going to look up and say, 
Oh, more slaves. Get them! Oh, let's roll initiative. Ugh. I'm not with them! I have a nine. Okay. So, Black has a nine. Fourteen. Solid Yank seven. Fourteen. Five. Lint, you had, what did you have, Lint? Lint flock. Sorry about, my thing was muted. Uh, I got a seven. And Thatcher, you had a five? Five, you. Five. When I shot my gun, I closed my eyes because big sounds scare me. Roll mine real quick. This would be a perfect opportunity to remind everybody of the giveaway while I'm rolling all of the horrible things. Yeah, if you want to use the command exclamation point giveaway, it'll take you to our gleam.io. Yo, you all right there? Celebrate our total party kill with your own giveaway. Um, we're having a gif off, by the way. Chris can't handle it. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Uh, let's see. All right. So as combat begins, uh, Gank, you are oh. first. Oh. All right. So how far am I away from any, any, anybody? You are about thirty-five feet away uh, from a bearded devil. All right, I'll move 15 feet to get within 20, and then I'm going to take out uh, two darts out of my, my, my satchel, and I'm going to throw both of them. Okay. Uh, I'll roll two attack rolls. Here we go. Uh, ooh, that's, uh, that's a 20 and a natural one. The 20 definitely hits. Okay, that's a little whole D4 coming at you. Uh, that's four points of piercing damage as this dart comes flying through the air. So they're within... How many... Uh, I can't do that. That's a bonus. Mm, yep, and that's it for me. Uh, I will use a key point and do patient defense. Uh, next. So as the three of you are standing at at the the door, the, now the, two, the three of you remaining are standing at the door, from behind you, a flash of blue light from a laser gun goes towards the bone master as Quailish takes a shot from his finger that so he takes the shot the bone devil uh is able to roll his shoulder out of the way and it just barely misses him uh next a bearded devil is going to run up to gank and take a attack at you with its glaive so i took the dodge does it have disadvantage Yes, it does. Is that what it is? Okay. All right. Uh, it rolled a six. So uh, you just stand there staring at it, and as it takes its swipe, you just kind of casually, like, like Keanu Reeves, move out of the way. All right. Uh, it is now... Am I in here? The other bearded devil's turn. He's going to run up to you and take another swipe with his glaive. So do you still have patient... Does it last the whole turn? Uh, let's see. Oh, where did it go? Uh, you can spend one key point and take a dodge action as a bonus action on your turn. Okay. So, I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Uh, uh, I, I think it still stands. Uh, yeah. So, with the two, uh, the other bearded devil attempts to swing at you with the glaive, and it just completely whiffs again. Yes. And it is now... Well, Lint's, uh, Lint's turn. Lint fly. Uh, how many charges are left in this gun? Because you you rolled you rolled the charges. Okay, so I had three in total, so I wasted one. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think outside the box, but I think we're gonna have to think inside the box. I'm gonna um. Oh wait, hold on, I can't think outside the box. Uh, I'm gonna shoot uh two two rounds at this ugly fella, and that's a. Another three and a thirteen, so he lives. Okay, uh, so you take two shots with the laser rifle, uh, and still you're just you have you can't it's not connecting like you can't make it. It's like I, I would like to use my uh, final little piece of action to uh, use my magical item, and I am going to disguise myself as a boulder on the ground, 
and not move. <laughs> All right. So in this uh, this metal building, uh, completely made of metal and, and circuitry, and uh, you you take your two shots and you kind of look around and. Uh, what is your magical item? What does it look like? Uh, it's basically just a. It looks like a like a just a just a real uh, burlap sack, basically a large. Because I'm I'm for, remember I'm a huge uh, a giant person, so I pull out what basically looks like a giant bag for potatoes. I wrap it around myself and I drop to the ground, and I look just like a rock, and it gives okay. me a, a advantage on stealth checks. Okay. So I'm hoping uh, they don't see me and leave me alone. You have gone pet rock mode. All right. Uh, next would be Thatchery. There he is. All right. All right. So uh, I see that the gun that is imbued with holy essence has missed. And uh, I'm a bit worried about everybody dying here. So I'm going to cast Enhance Ability at fifth level. So... Uh, my three companions and Quailish are all going to get Bear's Endurance, so they have advantage on constitution checks, and they gain uh, nine temporary hit points. All right. See, this is why you bring clerics. <laughs> so nice. All right, Hopefully we're back. nobody dies. So everybody has nine temporary hit points, and we are down to the bone devil uh it is going to take a run and then take off into the air and get about 30 feet above and it's going to uh float there well he won <laughs> oh, i didn't know it could fly uh <laughs> yeah so uh it's going it's going to get a, basically just use its movement to get it as close to you guys as possible uh next uh the imps uh turn uh, the are we three at the top are... of the order. And next we are. Okay, I didn't go yet. I am so sorry, I missed you. It's okay. Go ahead, take your turn. No, it's okay. Take your turn. We're all gonna die. I'll just stand here and watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. I'm gonna take a shot at the flying bone devil with one of my laser rifle shots. Okay. All right. Oh god. Oh my god. Not bad. It's a 19 plus 4, 23. That hits. Is it still imbued with that holy... You are imbued for an hour. Yeah. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, no. It's concentration. Oh, that's okay. It's okay. So was your, was your other... Was your... Was your other spell concentration? Is yeah, it... Bears endurance. Yeah, I'm gonna bet those are both those are both concentration spells. Yes, they are. Whoops, I've never played a cleric before. <laughs> it's, it's fine. No, everything's fine. This is on fire. What is the damage again? Uh three D eight is the base for the laser rifle. That's a whole that's an eight. Plus four, twelve, plus three, fifteen. Plus two, 17. 17 points of damage? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You All right. betcha. All right. So you take another shot with the rifle, and you finally get the hang of how this works and the, the arc of the laser bolt. And it does hit him in the midsection, uh, but he's still flying, and he lets out a, a vicious roar. And the imps are now going to take a turn. Three imps are going to, uh, the three imps are going to turn themselves invisible. And that'll be the end of their turn. Uh, back to the top, Gank, it is your turn. All right, are there a cluster of imps? Are they, like, uh, they have tight? gone invisible. Oh, sorry, I missed that. Um, and then it's the bone devil floating up, yeah? Yeah, and then the two bearded devils are on top of you in melee. Oh, well, shit, let's take care of those guys. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take a spear attack to the one in front of me. Okay. Try to hit something tonight. Uh, that's going to be a 
16. Sorry, math is hard today. Def that hits. 16, okay. Uh, wow, rolled a one on the damage die. That's a six points of piercing damage. And then I'm going to punch it with my second attack. Oh, that's, uh, that's going to be a 24. <laughs> rolled a one on the damage die. That's four points of bludgeoning. Ten, and then, ten total points? Four total. Well, to, yeah, total between the two. Okay. And then I'm going to use um, a key point and do Fury of Blows and two more punches. Okay. That's the 24 and uh, nine to hit. 24 and a nine to hit. 24 hits. Okay. Um, that's going to be eight points of bludgeoning. All right, next up in the order is Quailish. Uh, he's going to take shot number two at the Bone Devil. Uh, seven definitely doesn't hit. Uh, it's just a wild shot. Next up in the order is the Bearded Devil that you just hit, Gank. Uh, he's going to take an attack with his beard. Uh, that's an eight. He's going to take his second hit. Uh, 24. Who is that to? Sorry. To, to Gank. Oh, yeah, 24 hits. All right, uh, five points of piercing damage, and I need you to make a con, uh, con save, please. Okay, so five comes off of my temporary hit points. That's cool. And then a con save. Uh, that's a natural 20. Ha <laughs> finally. Okay. Again, you're able to uh, resist the poison. Uh, oh, I'm, a, the... I'm immune to poison, so... Oh. Yeah. Mm. Oh, mm, 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 mm. Purity mm. of mind in this monk body. No, no big deal. I spent many months. Uh, That's a fancy way of saying nope. I have a kale diet. <laughs> Nothing but kale. Uh, let's see. Bearded Devil number two is going to take a swing at you. Uh, with his glaive, he's going to miss. He's going to take a second opportunity. 22. That hits for sure. 12 points of slashing damage, and I need a con save again. Uh, is it for poison? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. No, you can't be poisoned, so it doesn't matter. 12 points of slashing damage. Beep, 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 okay. beep. Beep, beep, doop. Okay. Now, in the correct order, it is Block's turn. How are you looking, gang? I'm okay. I'm good. After that short rest, I'm, I'm I good. I mean, I got, like, 104 plus I mean, 9 hit points. Yeah, so I'm, I'm half of that, so feel free to jump in here anytime. I mean... <laughs> so I'm going to step into melee with both of them and uh, kind of nudge for Gank to go back and then pull out that my sword and uh, do some chops on the one that looks the weakest. Okay, that would be the one that's on the right. Go ahead. Um, okay, uh, 20 to hit. Definitely hits. Definitely. And 10 and then a 26. Uh, the 26 hits, 10 doesn't. So, 7 plus 10, 17 points of damage. Alright. And I'm going to tell Gank, you should step back now. Alright. Uh, next up in the order is uh, Lint Flock. You're up. All right, I think, look, I've been thinking about this, and I think I know what I gotta do. I am going... Can can I lasso the demon out of the air? I have 50 feet of rope. Could I try it? Yes. So, here's what we'll do. I like it. Why, why don't you give me a dex check to see if you can lasso? All right. And then a strength check contested uh, to All see right. if you're able to pull him out of the sky. Alright, so I can't lasso. And I'm weak as shit. In that <laughs> order. So, uh, you throw the lasso and, uh, amazingly, it does snag on something. Uh, you catch one of the invisible imps. And it starts pulling and tugging and fighting against you. Uh, and you're not able to pull it down. But you do have one lassoed, so. <laughs> Yay! Steven, have you rolled over a 10 tonight? I don't 
don't think I've rolled over a four at this point. This has been really rough rolling for y'all. Yeah, it's it's not been great. Uh, let's see. It is uh, Thatchery's turn. Uh, all right. Um, I have an idea. The the bearded ones and the imps that I can't see. Like, how far are they from each other? This, is this how big is like the bubble of this room? So at its at its widest point, seventy five feet. Uh, mm. You can only currently see the Bone Master flying in the air and the imp that uh, that Lint Flock has lassoed. The other two you cannot see. Correct. Can I see the the Barb de- Devil Demon? The, the like middle range dudes. There's two the, of those, the, right? Yeah, the, they are currently in melee combat with Block right now. Oh, so they're near each other. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to cast uh, Confusion at both of them, and it's a 10-foot radius, so hopefully I grab some imps too, but I can't see the imps, so I don't really know. Um, they have to make a uh, some sort of saving throw. I'm assuming it's Wisdom. Yep, it's Wisdom. Uh, I rolled an 11 and a 9. Those both fail. They are confused. And that uh, makes them attack the, each other, correct? Well, it's a roll. Should I roll the d10 or you? You roll it. Okay. He was smiling when he said it. Don't do it. All right. So they uh, don't do anything. They don't move or take actions for the next turn. They just don't do anything. They're just confused. All right. Their arms fall to their sides. Uh, Their glaives kind of drag on the ground. And they kind of, they kind of do Travolta and Pulp Fiction, like, you know. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else? That's that's it. I I'm not allowed to cast a spell as my bonus action if I cast one as my action, right? Or can I? Cantrip. Cantrip. If it's, it. yeah. If it's a cantrip. Yep. Oh. All right. Well, if I'm allowed to cast a cantrip. Nope, that's an action. Never mind. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. It's fine. All right. It is uh, the Bone Devil's turn. Uh, the Bone Master. He is going to fly down to block. Uh, and he's going to take a claw, a claw, and a sting with its tail. That's an 18, a 23, and a 24. The last two hit. Okay. The claws do five points of slashing damage. The sting does 11 points of piercing, and I need you to roll a constitution save. Uh, seven. You are poisoned for one minute, taking 17 points of poison damage. So 23 total, is that what we were saying? Uh, 16, yes, 23 total points. That girl in poison. He's dying. I'm not even (laughs) close. Alright, uh, it is now the imps' turns. Two of the imps, which were invisible, are going to appear over Thatchery's head, and they're both going to take attacks. Ooh. All right. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. The the imps just fly to the back line. That's where you're at. That's fine. Uh, uh, let's see. That is a ten and a thirteen. Neither of those hit. I just take my shield that's probably larger than I am and just turtle. Nice. <laughs> All right. And you can feel them scratching on the other side of your shield. Uh, that puts us at the bottom. We're back to the top. Gank, it's your turn. Oh, Gank. Okay, so I am next to uh, Block, who is engaged with two bearded devils, and the bone devil has now come into melee, yeah? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, after he tells me to the, get to the back, I'm going to take my fists and punch them together, and I'm going to uh, cast Shatter. Uh, using three key points to cast shatter and try to get all of the the bone devils and or the bone devil and the bearded devils okay 
in uh, it's it's a it's a ten foot. Uh, let, let me let me read. Sure. Make sure. Uh, ten foot radius sphere centered on a point that I can try to get all three of them if I can. Okay. Yeah, you can get all three. Okay, that's a Constitution saving throw on their part, and they're gonna take three d eight thunder. So Constitution saves for them. Okay. Uh, D DC is sixteen. And what what what, what save was it? Con. Con. Okay. The the Bone Master rolls a twenty four. The two bearded devils rolled really low, so they're okay. They both right. are affected. So they'll take 10 points of thunder damage and the bone devil will take bone master will take uh 5. 10 points you said? Yeah, 10 for the bearded's. Yep. Okay. And then I will bonus action punch the the beard the bone devil. Okay. Uh that's a 9 plus 7 that's 16. Uh, does not hit. I yeah yeah okay. Uh, that's and then yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna hang next to next to block. Quailish is up. Uh, seeing the imps on Thatchery, he's going to come over and he's gonna take a swing at them with the butt of his gun, and he's gonna miss both of them. We are he the sees. best. He sees no thatchery. He sees a shield that's just like shaking with fear. <laughs> just on he the goes, ground. He goes over to assist the turtle shell. I like to think that this is the part where like if this were the movie, it would open on this scene where all of us are missing and it would get to the record scratch and it'd be like, yep, that's us. I bet you're wondering how we got into this situation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do, 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 do. yeah that's, that's a pretty accurate description so far. Uh, so the bearded devils are going to take their turns. Uh, bearded devil number one, who's looking really rough, uh, is going to take a glaive. They attack. are confused. Oh, that's right. They don't. Do they anything. don't do nothing. They just stand there, like, what are we doing here? Um, skip, skip. Okay, block. You're up. Do, well, let me ask. Do they? So when do they get to roll their their saves again? On their turn. On confusion, mm -hmm. I believe it is only last one turn. I don't think it. I don't think they have to roll again. I think it just goes away gotcha. at the end. Okay. All right, block. You're up. Uh, confusion lasts for one. Oh minute. no. Yeah, no, you're right. So they uh, they roll at the start of each of their turns to see what the new behavior is. At the end of its turn, an affected target can make a wisdom saving throw. That. There it is. At the is. end of its turn. Yeah. All right. So we'll try and break them out. Uh, I rolled a 16 and a 10. Well, that 16 is the success. The 10 is uh, not. Okay. All right. So the one that's looking pretty rough was able to break out. The other one that's standing pretty tall, he's still under the effects of the spell. Okay. Right. Block it is your turn. I'm going to hit the one that's looking pretty rough um, with a 20. That's a 16 plus 8. Uh, 24. <laughs> that hits. 17. And then a 26. Yeah, those those all three hit. Okay. Um, who 13 for the first. Yeah, it's dead. Can I take the other two attacks towards the other one? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Oh, then another 13. Jiminy. And then an 8. So, 21 towards the 20, second one. Okay. Ooh, he's looking pretty rough as well. Alright. Uh, next in the order is... Lindflock. You have an imp lassoed. The big one's in the air. He's just such a problem. The big one has landed, and he's now in melee with uh, Block and Gank. Then my plan will go into effect. I would like to try to use the imp that I currently have lassoed as a battering ram to knock the big one prone. Okay. We, all right, we can do it. Well, I mean, I mean, you know, I gotta try. <laughs> yeah. So what I want you to do. All right. 
This is never how it ends good for me, but continue. Oh no. I want you to make an athletics check, and I'll tell you why. Because okay. I'm imagining you start, like, hammer tossing it. So you grab it, and you start, like, spinning around in a circle. And you're going to try and get and get it under the Bone Master's legs to trip him. Does that sound good? That not only sounds amazing, I am proficient in athletics, and that's a plus nine. With God as my witness, we're going to do this, boys. Roll that dice. Duh. Da -da 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 That's a twenty-eight, correct? That is a twenty-eight, baby. You spit on your hands, you grab that rope, and you start spinning and spinning and spinning. And I'm imagining you're doing this while everybody else was doing their rounds, just in the background, just spinning, spinning. And the imp starts picking up speed, and you whip it, and it's able to catch the bone master's legs and entangle him and he falls prone anything Bitch. else nope that was it uh, wait oh, i guess do i have an extra attack i think uh i mean that's up I to you really. that probably took i think that probably took up your whole turn fantastic oh uh, right, next next is thatchery uh turtling under the shield uh thatchery is gonna just like peek his little gnomish head out of the of the shield and this like big beak nose is just like peeking over the rim. Just gonna kinda like take in the situation, see the big guy on the floor, see his friends and ah cast healing word on a uh, gank. Yeah, gank's the one who's been taking the big hits. I'm gonna cast a uh, healing word at fourth level on gank. Yeah. So that's four D four. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's that's a four plus three plus two plus two. So math is very hard. Eleven plus three, so fourteen points of healing damage for you, yeah. gank. I am up to full. No. I will be a cleric Not and like do a cleric you. thing. Oh. <laughs> uh. And that is a bonus action, I believe. Yes, it is. So I still have an yeah. action. Can I cast a cantrip as my action? Yes. All right, then at the other uh, bearded devil, the one that's still confused, I'm going to cast Cold Told the Dead on it. Okay, go ahead. That makes a wisdom saving throw. Oh, uh, that's a 17. Oh, all right. Well, then nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> Dang cantrips. Instead so of hearing this like bong in its head, it just hears a boom, tiny little, mm -hmm. as I duck under my shield again. All right, uh, the Bone Master is going to take his turn, uh, so he's going to claw, claw, and sting at block. That's an eighteen, twenty-one, and twenty-five. The last two hit. Uh, let's see, six, eighteen is what twenty-four. Uh, so 24 points of, uh, or what is it? Six points of slashing damage, 18 points of piercing, uh, and I need you to roll a con save for poison. Oofta. It's an eight. Okay, plus 17 points of poison damage. So that's, what, 35, that's four, 41 points of damage. I'm good, so... <laughs> Hey, how you feel? How you feel about that? Uh, the <laughs> amps are gonna take their turn. They're gonna try and get. Um... An angel. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, they're gonna try and take a. They're gonna try and take a uh, bite at um, Thatchery. Would you say? And it's gonna be with Thatchery is within melee of me. No, she's further back. He's under his shield by the door. Okay, yeah, he's for the back. Yeah, he's, right. yeah, he's he's hiding under his shield back by the door. The imps are on top of him, so That's he right. can't move. <laughs> uh, they're gonna attack with disadvantage. Uh, that is an eleven and a ten. Nope. No bueno. 
Just turtles. Right. Dude, that turtle is amazing. <laughs> yeah, that, that, you hear this, like, faint, just, <laughs> as the metal shield is just, like, <clears throat> against the metal floor. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see, we're uh, back to the top. Uh, Gank, you're up. Uh, seeing the bone master there, I'm going to take two spear attacks. Uh, uh, that's a 20 and a 12. The to 20 hit. hits. Okay. I'm going to... That's going to be 8 points of piercing damage. I'm going to use a key point to make that a stunning strike. So and has... that, was on, that was on the Bone Devil? Yeah, yeah. Um, it has to give me a constitution save of 16. Does not pass. Okay. It is stunned until the start, the end of my next turn. Okay. And stunned, just to read it out. Uh, it's incapacitated, can't move, uh, speaks only falteringly, uh, automatically fails strength and dex saves, attack rolls have advantage against him. Uh, so I will use my bonus action uh, punch. Okay. At, with advantage. Uh, that's going to be, uh, yeah, that's like a 24. Uh, definitely hits. Defiantly hits. Uh, that's eight more points of bludgeoning. All right. And that'd be it. All right. Uh, next up is Quailish. Uh, he's going to attempt to take out the, the two imps. That's a 16 to hit and a 20 to hit. Nice. Uh, so as he takes and swings at the two imps. He's able to catch both of them, and and he's able to bust their skulls in. Both of the imps are dead. And we are now at uh, Block. It's your turn. Okay, yeah, I'm going to take three attacks against the uh, Bone Master Lord guy, yeah, whatever his Go name is. Go for it. Oh. Sorry, my headphones came up. Uh... So a 12 does not hit. Does not hit. Uh, do, 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 uh, 20. Hits. Another 20. Hits. Okay, uh, so that is 9 plus 7. Okay, so 16 points of damage. Yeah. All right. Uh, as you take these two giant swings at it, uh, the Bone Master does appear to be bleeding. Um, it's looking a little rough. Next up is... I would also like to rush the Bone Master and do uh, both my... Uh, 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 what, what, are they, what are these called? Uh, what are these called? One second, where is it? I don't know. I got two short swords in my hands. I want to hit them four times, basically. Do it. Yay! A 16. Uh, an 11. A nat you one. A, you do have advantage. And on a the 9. Hit. Oh, hold on. Okay, so then the first one is a 16. The second one is a is a 9. Neither uh, of those are. Okay, yep. That sounds about right. <laughs> uh, the... The... Uh, the... Uh, 21... 21 hits. And an 11. 11 does not hit. All right, I am useless. Fantastic. Uh, we're going to go for this D6 here. And that's just going to be a 1 plus 5, so I do 6 damage. Um, And then I would like to just leave. <laughs> I have done literally nothing this entire campaign. I'm leaving the stream. So you're just hitting him, hitting him, and hitting him, and nothing's happened. But you do actually get one slice in. It does seem to appear to have broken skin. <laughs> Excellently done. And then I just stand uh, right in front of him and make eye contact, waiting for what I know should happen to me. <laughs> oh, it's coming. Uh, Thatchery, you're up. You're, uh, you're on mute. This, this computer and this Discord are not friends. Um, Alright, so... 
uh, there's the one big guy, and the imps around me are gone, so I'm gonna, like, peek out from underneath my shield, and, like, everybody's over by the big guy, and, oh, well, Block looks pretty hurt, but maybe the big guy looks more hurt, and... I never said it was a good cleric, so I'm going to cast Gadden Bolt at 4th level at the big guy. Oh, okay. hell yeah. In fact, I am a very bad cleric, so... uh, Natural 20. Now is the time. So, okay, back up. So, you ca- what did you cast? Gu- Guiding Bolt at 4th level. Okay, uh, well, a natural 20, 100% hits, and you get to double your damage. I roll 7d6. Yeah, you do. <laughs> oh, That's my all radiant, God, okay. Too. Um, well, that was shit, so that was <laughs> 1, 1, and a 2, so that's 4. <laughs> 1, 1, and a 2 again, so that's 8. Plus 4, so 12 doubled is 24. It's <laughs> pretty good. It's That's like as good. she fires it, Ave Maria plays, but it's on one of those recorders, and it was done by a fifth grader. You got too close to Flintlock is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> I passed all my luck unto thee. Yeah, 24 points of radiant damage. All right. Uh, so, yeah, as the, as the beam of white, hot, bright light uh, hits him, uh, he lets out a, a devilish scream. Uh, he's looking... Whew, he's looking really bad. Uh, let's see. Next up is the Bone Devil. And he's, he's going to... Uh, he's still stunned? Yeah, until the end of my turn. Fuck. Ah, okay. I'm gonna get it right Be Sons honest. Were you he's about to bitches. end me? The, uh, the imp that was tied up in the lasso is going to attempt to break free. Oh my god, I forgot about you him. You forgot about your little boy, didn't you? <laughs> I forgot my boy. boy. My little boy. Uh, uh, with a 15. Uh, well, I, I'm assuming he can just do it. It's a lasso, right? Yeah, I don't really he, think I put a lot of real effort into this. Uh, so the, the imp is going to wiggle his way out of the lasso, and he's going to run into the portal. Next up, next up is Gank. Yeah, I'm going to take uh, two shots with my fists at advantage. Okay. There's the first one. Uh, that's a, a 25. Second punch. Oh, that's a 26. Both of those hit, I imagine. Uh, that's seven. That's 13 points of bludgeoning, and then I'm going to do a key point Fury of Blows and do two more punches. Okay. Try to end this fool. Hopefully close. Um, that's a 22. And that's a 22. Hits. Oh, get back in there. Alright, that's a... 14 more points of bludgeoning damage as I'm just <laughs> punching, uh... How would you like it today? Oh, I want to just like just start shattering any sort of semblance of a rib cage that is there as my fists are just landing, seeing that okay. the any kind of skin is just like reverberating the the pressure, the bludgeoning damage. Okay, uh, so yeah, as you start punching it, it's covered in like the bones of its enemies. And the bones start cracking, and then you get to the flesh underneath, and you just keep pounding it as hard as you can. Uh, and the bone master just doubles over, just dead from the sheer pain of it all. Uh, oh. The bone devil's now dead. We're going to leave uh, combat at this time. Can, I, uh, can While all that was happening, I was just standing there, mere inches away, as his fist flew past my head, exploding bone onto my face. Definitely happened. Totally. My character exactly. is a little bit in love with him. <laughs> in awe? Just kind of... Just a little bit. <laughs> just kind of crushing. <laughs> like, I'm definitely going to give you like a larger piece of meat at the campfire later. 
and I'm gonna linger a little bit when I hand you your plate. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the portal's still open. Uh, Quailish is going to run up to a computer terminal and start typing on it. Um, as he does, a very large horn starts to come through the portal. And right as what appears to be the face of an Aranius gets through the portal, Quailish hits the enter button and the portal shuts closed. And you've got a face of an Aranius playing on the ground there in front of you. Ugh. I'm real glad you had that button because I do not have Dispel Magic prepared. I was worried yes. about that the whole time. We were very fortunate. We, we have to go now. Um, listen, I, this place needs to go away. This, these are forces that no one should be dealing with. Uh, you need, you need to leave. Uh, Don't have to ask me twice. The big library. Didn't we come for something? Uh, the, appar the apparatus? Big library. You, you, you can't, can't take any of this. No one can have this information. I guess, okay. Oh, that can I go look ahead. at him? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead, go ahead. Okay, can I look at him with the biggest, most adorable giant puppy eyes <laughs> and say, please, mister, can I take the gun? Fair enough. I'm going to shoot the gun at the head that fell through just because I have a bullet left. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, you totally hit it. Natural 20. <laughs> so as you hit it, it just explodes and a bunch of green bloody goo goes bleh. All right, so to wrap this up, I'm assuming you guys all make your way off the island. Oh, as it goes going... against what my God believes I in, think, but... I think I'm pulling Anders because I feel yeah, like Thatchery he would be... might need to be taken yeah. away from the big library. I feel like Thatchery is going to just be... <laughs> I'm, I, I'm just gonna no. pull him the whole way. Just crying, big <laughs> Am I tears. the suggestion that we fight the robot? <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> I will happily kill my idol if it means we get to keep the books. Uh, so as as Block is pulling Thatcher away, and he's <laughs> no. just struggling and fighting, and he's just. He's trying his best to grab any of the books. Uh, he is able to grab a hold of a piece of a book. And uh, as you all leave the library, I'm imagining you're all on the ferry heading back down. You see the, the, the Sphinx fly up to the island. As you make it to the crest of the mountain, you see the floating island begin to explode in on itself as the debris falls into the valley below. Crying, just sobbing. No. I do not think he had a demolition permit for that. <laughs> I, I guess we're heroes. I believe our job is done. Thatcher, you look at the piece, the page of the book that you have. It does appear to be schematics for some kind of weapon. I'm going to roll it up and tuck it away. I put my hand on Gank's shoulder. Yeah. You did real good today. Uh, yeah. Real you, good. You did real good, too. Real fantastic. I'm going to laugh. And with, that, that. and with that, there's a freeze frame. <laughs> and we play Don't You Forget About Me like the Breakfast Club. Don't you forget about me. And that's my game! That was great! So Yay, fun. Hey, that was good. fun! Uh, I want to thank everybody for playing, especially our guest players. I uh, had a lot of fun playing with you guys. Uh, do you, you want to do one last plug before we get out of here? I think so. I think you guys should, for sure. Anders, right. you want to go first? What am I doing? A plug, plug for whatever you want. Last plug for us? 
Oh, to to plug. Oh gosh, I'm never good at these. I I, I don't have to turn anymore. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I'm Anders. You can find me on the internet at Anders underscore D underscore K. I'm gonna be dungeon mastering some salt marsh campaigns on Saturday over on Variant Rolls. Um, I also play on other channels. Just follow me on Twitter. It's never the same thing. I'll just tell you, and if you like watching me, you can just check it out. Or check out other people who you like watching more. You know what? Do what you do. That's my plug. It's midnight here. It's bedtime. <laughs> Steven? Oh, Steven? What's up, guys? Steven the Demon here, coming at you from the Oddball Show. Today we had a fantastic stream. We're going to be doing it all the time. Well, not really. I'm not invited back for a while. But anyways, and then uh, feel free to go over to the Oddball Show on Twitch. Drop a follow. Drop a like. We're growing every day. And then there's supposed to be, like, sound effects here that I put in in post. And then, uh, uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You can follow us on Twitter at the Oddball Stream, probably. I don't really know what our handle is. I will deal with that. Uh... Uh, that's all I got. <laughs> and with that, we'll say goodnight. Tune back in tomorrow night for the podcast, Friday for Waterdeep. Night, everybody. Yep, good night. <laughs>